Y'all, I'm trying to record a video. <laughs> you can't be in here while I'm recording. Man, I got got my whole setup here, and look at this dog. <laughs> this is what she does, because she's looking out the window, making sure we're safe. Today I'm gonna compare for you the Master Books Level 1 for Language Arts and the Good and the Beautiful Level 1 for Language Arts. I did compare Master Books Language Lessons for a Living Education Level 5 with the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts for Level 4 and also with Level 6. But I need to compare these Level 1s because they are comparing things that are different than those higher levels. They're not so much spelling and writing as there are phonics and how to read. So what are the main differences here? Now, before you say, but Rachel, level one is gonna be updated. This is gonna be obsolete. Not the things that I have to compare because what I have to compare, this is kind of really more about the differences in the companies and how they are approaching these levels. And so I don't think that the good and the beautiful is gonna to stray too far in that way. These updates for levels K through two will be available by summer of 2022. What they are updating is actually bringing these programs a little bit more to grade level. The level one that my daughter just did is a little bit more advanced. So I am not gonna touch on that part because I know that they're kind of bringing, bringing it down a little bit in intensity. But here are the things that I am going to compare for you. I'm going to be comparing the cost, the number of lessons, the binding, how it works, phonics, reading, art, engaging activities, testing progress, and the biblical aspect. All right, I have all the things here, including the dog. All right, Bella? She's just gonna be here while I record, <laughs> hopefully. She's behaving. Master Books Language Lessons for Living Education is currently at $62.97, and that includes four books. I have two of them, or three of them here. I have this book, this book, and this book, and I cannot, for the life of me, remember what the third book is, but I will picture it here. The Good and the Beautiful, this was $58.97 and came with flashcards and a reader. But I know that what they're, one of the things that they're gonna update is they're gonna have no more flashcards, they're gonna have phonics books. And actually what I saw on the website, and I'll link their little preview below in case it's not out yet at the time of this video. The books to me looked similar to what a Becca does in terms of it's a book where you keep going through the phonic sound and then there's a bunch of words there to practice rather than having flashcards to mess with. So that's kind of interesting. I think they're gonna have phonics cards too because I will say the one thing I like about having flashcards is I can separate them by the ones that are mastered versus the ones that we haven't gotten to yet versus you know the ones that we're working on. I have no doubt that the updates that the Good and the Beautiful make to this program is gonna be wonderful. The number of lessons. Master Books had 80 lessons, whereas the current Good and the Beautiful Level 1 has 120 lessons, so that's 40 lessons more. That's pretty significant. The binding. They're changing the binding on this. So I did make a YouTube short. If you go ahead, if you went ahead and ordered the old one while they had a sale on it, there is a video for how you can fix the binding, it's a little 60 second video. If you can see, I have yarn binding it together because otherwise these covers will fall off. But they're changing that to like a book bound binding that lays flat. So that's a good improvement. Whereas Language Lessons for Living Education, I had to cut off the book bound binding. This actually comes with three hole punches in here so you could put it in a binder. It also comes book bound, but it does not lay flat. So I had it cut off spiral bound so that, because I like spiral. So how it works, they're both open and go, but I feel like the good and the beautiful is more open and go than master books. And what do I mean by that? The good and the beautiful, I don't really have to do any planning. I open it, it says, teacher, say this, and then here's your activity for the day. It says, go to the back to this chart, and then test in this way. Like it tells me for that lesson, do this, do this, do this, do this. 
Master Books is that to a degree. See, it has extra things in the back, but it doesn't ever tell me to use these. It comes with, and I have it in a different binder because I didn't have it bound with my daughter's stuff, but it comes with extra ideas for how to do spelling. It comes with like phonics charts, but I don't ever remember it telling me, go look at this chart on this page, go, you know, add your books to this reading list. It never prompts me to go there. It comes with a lot of ideas for teacher. I put them in a separate mom binder, but then I really never refer to them. I would much rather be prompted to do that. And with master books, I feel like it just gives you a slew of ideas, but you kind of have to educate yourself as teacher if you're gonna utilize them, whereas you really don't with the good and the beautiful. You open lesson one and you just do what it says. For example, one of her early lessons, she was supposed to do a scavenger hunt in the yard and find some things in nature. The activity was actually write the letter that these things started with, but I had her try to write the word trash. <laughs> but it was fun for her to just go around in the yard and try to find these different things for that activity. And I really liked that the good and the beautiful prompted us for that. I didn't have to say, what fun things should we do to practice your letters for the day? It just told us what to do. I like being told what to do. By curriculum, I guess. Maybe not so much by anybody else. One thing that the Good and the Beautiful is updating that would have been nice to have, which I think is a really cool update, is they're gonna have a phonics app so your child can practice their phonics on your app. Really handy, right? Master Books don't have anything like that. Another, just this is kind of a minor difference that I noticed, the way that they decode words is different. So the Good and the Beautiful will have them say each sound and then smush it together. But they have to say each sound, whether or not, you know, my daughter oftentimes would just wanna go right to the word because she could read right away, but they don't want them to do that. Practice each sound because the more complex the words are, that's what they're gonna to have to do anyway. And I don't really think that Master Books did it that way. They didn't quite emphasize that part the same, but that was a really, that's a really handy tip. So even if you do use Master Books, I recommend that tip. So the good and the beautiful, every single lesson was prompting me to either practice the phonics cards or to practice sight word ladders. Again, I like the prompts to say, practice this. Masterbook, they had prompts for review sight words for independent reading, so did the good and the beautiful. They had in here, phonics reviews, but we didn't have phonics flashcards, if that makes sense. So it was slightly different in that way. For the reading, I did like this about Master Books. So first of all, the door to salvation was really not incorporated in the program at all. So if you're looking to save money and you don't wanna buy the three books, the other one is Charlie and the Grand Canyon Adventure. For the program, you, you read this one first, and this was kind of their reader and how they were learning to identify similar words. So we would read the whole story and then maybe one day we would just read one page and this was the picture study. So what's going on in the picture? How do you think these people feel? And of course, this is a story kind of about Noah's Ark and a little mouse who was on Noah's Ark. So there is definitely some Christian theology mixed in there a little bit. And then Charlie and the Grand Canyon Adventure also talked a little bit about creation, but it was another reading book that she did have to read. But The Door to Salvation wasn't used at all. It was really more like, Congratulations on completing the program. Now you can read The Door to Salvation. I, lo I love this book. It's, an op it's a lift the flap book, but at the same time, I kind of felt like that's a little bit misleading though to say that you need this book for the program when you really don't. I feel like they just got me to buy another book that I didn't really need. So that was just kind of the one. I don't know if I would have bought it anyway. It's hard to say, but I definitely did not need it for the program. The Good and the Beautiful tells you to use this reader and this reader is fine. It's pretty easy reader, it's fine. But do you need this reader? I honestly can say no, you don't. You can use any reader.
So you do not have to use the Good and the Beautiful readers to do their language arts program. We have a bunch of old school Dick and Jane books. She's read all these. I have a lot of old school classical conversations, their younger grades, this is what they sell. So there's all kinds of readers out there. They're just fine because really all they're prompting you to do is do your independent reading for the day. Now, the good and the beautiful might say, read this story in your reader. So it's, it's having you go along according to the phonics that you're practicing, but the good and the beautiful is really only prompting you once, maybe twice, a week if you do a lesson every day to read one story and again my daughter's a little bit more advanced so often I'm having her read one or two maybe go back and read stories or pull from some of our other readers we're not done with the good and the beautiful level one and she's reading chapter books just fine so she found these A to Z mystery books which are really fun super super skinny books I mean 75 pages for the story and this is kind of what they look like inside. There's Some of them have pictures, so it's not really even truly 75, and then some of them don't have pictures. But she can easily read one of these books in a week if I tell her to sit down and read for 15 minutes. So I would say if you're trying to save money, you don't need this reader. I do think it's a nice reader though, and I think the stories are just fine, but it's just like any other old school reader. So for the art, master books had picture studies, like I said, from the books. And The Good and the Beautiful has picture studies also. And there are things like this, and you know, what colors do you see? Where do you see light? Things like that. There is also some paint incorporated, but this really kind of, this is a really a great transition into the activities that The Good and the Beautiful has versus master books. So for example, like right here, these pages are very, very thick. And so they would say, get some paints out and you're practicing a color, a tint, and a shade. And obviously right here gave them instructions for how to do that. And so there was a little painting inside the book. There's another little painting activity. So my daughter was supposed to pick colors that reminded her of the seasons here little picture study here. All kinds of fun and engaging activities like this um, practicing your sight words little game here. I showed you the nature study. There's all kinds of activities that say cut out the letters first so it'll it'll prompt you in here like right here. See so there are letters that were cut out right here. This was probably one. So you cut out the letters and then figuring out what words that they can make. So fort, torn, is tort a word? No, H, horn. But this is very common. I would say once a week, maybe every other week, they're cutting out letters and doing activities like that. Another painting activity. My daughter painted that. This was an activity where we got a fly swatter. I would read these sentences to her. So I dictated the sentences and she had to decide which two was correct and she got a fly swatter to swat which one was correct. There are just these sorts of activities all over this curriculum. Not really so much in here. Here is a picture study here, again about the, from the Not Too Small at All book. Oh, looks like we missed a T here. These sorts of activities, which The Good and the Beautiful also has, this is very similar word fun. So they are practicing a little bit about nouns and parts of speech. Creating your own dictionary. That was an activity that my daughter did not enjoy at all. So I cut that out very quickly. She hated that. <laughs> so we did not create our, our dictionary for very long. She didn't want to draw the picture. She didn't want to go out here and she didn't want to write these words and then draw the picture. She just didn't really find that fun at all. And I just don't really think there was a whole lot in here that she did think was fun. She enjoyed reading with me and practicing her book. But the kind of the creativity in master books is not the same as the creativity in the good and the beautiful. Where Master Books excels is stuff like this, the biblical 
aspect. So if you need the biblical aspect, go with master books. If you're doing a separate family Bible study on your own anyway, or you're a mom who's constantly bringing in the Lord in your science and history anyway, then I would say the good and the beautiful is fine. It's not to the depth theologically as master books is going to be. Definitely refers to God and it definitely supports creationism. And then you can add the rest. I just want to point out, okay, so I talked about the cutting. I talked about painting. I talked about it prompting us to go on a nature walk. There's just a lot of variety every single week. A lot of variety. This one, and yeah, I'll put it right there. Fun. Next. Crazy, even, gravy, and lazy. Good job. I think I have that. Oh, I do. I can win either way. I can do this one, this one, or this one. Yep. I'm still good. Okay. Variety. Master books, again, is there was some variety here, so this was kind of interesting. But it was also, so here's where they're practicing some spelling words here. Every now and then. There, it just wasn't as varied. There was a lot of the same kinds of practice and then write your words here, write your words here, do a picture study. These little things were different, but then the create your own dictionary was the same every week. I can't say the good and the beautiful is the same every week at all. Another thing that my daughter loves about this is she loves these check boxes. Oh my goodness, I have a little type A on my hand. She wants to check the check boxes as soon as we move to the next activity and then when we get to the oh she missed one. She she will probably if I pointed that out to her she would be like, "Oh no." See, cuz she loves even checking it off of the whole page. <laughs> the check boxes are a big bonus to her. Another thing that's fun, I mean, the good and the beautiful is just so good at these little itty bitty details. She loves coloring these animals. So when you master one of these sight word ladders, you get to color an animal in your zoo. So again, check boxes for mastering the sight word ladders. The sight word ladders, again, are prompted, well, if it wants you to. So see right here, it says no phonics cards or sight word practice today. So there are days where you get off, but it's either gonna say practice your phonics or your sight word ladder. When she masters one, which I consider that she did it twice without hesitation, then she gets to color a little, a little animal in her zoo, which is another fun little activity. So it's just super, super fun. Master books again, lots of ideas when you get it and it's bound. They're not in this book now because I had the binding ripped off, but they do have a lot of ideas in here. It's just you have to figure out what you're going to do. You have to figure out when you're going to use them. It just is a little bit more planning and prep on mom in that way. Okay, so for testing progress, how does master books test progress? Well, when they can read the book on their own is kind of, yep, you did it. You've done it. You've that's how you're tested. And then if you have a spelling test, I guess you'll know your progress. The good and the beautiful is a little bit different and I actually like the way that they're doing it. Some people on social media have said that they don't think the good and the beautiful is systematic. They felt like it jumped around and I didn't feel that way at all. I feel like it's constantly reviewing Okay, so there are five units overall, and at the end of every unit, it's going to assess how you did. So unit one tests your child on all of these concepts that they did. This is very systematic, okay? Here we go for unit two assessment. I can't believe my daughter did not check those. 
probably because I needed to. There's a review so you can review the concepts to see how they do, what you might need to practice on. This is another thing, just real quickly, that I love. They tell you what supplies you need. So if you are gonna be doing like that fly swatter thing or you're gonna be doing painting, you see it right up front. So I'm telling you, this one is just seriously open and go. And then here's the test. So whenever it's in blue, that's what the teacher is reading. And then the child does whatever needs to be done here. And then you decide whether or not you need to review anything else. Here's what's gonna be learned in unit three. And then you have all of your lessons for unit three. At the end of unit three, you have your unit assessment. So there is a way to be tested, but that is not the only thing that shows whether or not your child is making progress. So right here in lesson 81, review chart B. So what is chart B? Well, I have it tabbed back here. So this is where all my charts are. Where's my review chart B? As you can see, there's a chart A, there's a chart B, chart C, chart D. There's all kinds of charts here. All right, so chart B is time the child. So they read the sentences. Do not help them unless they take like longer than four seconds, it says. So you're just timing the child. They're reading the sentences. And the first time, you write their time up there. And then a few lessons later, they're gonna come back here and you get to see and your child gets to see if they improved. So this chart, she improved four seconds from the time before. This one is time the child for 90 seconds and see how many words they can read. So my child can see the first time she did this, she only got 23 words. The last time she got 34. So she can visually see, hey, I'm getting faster at reading. I'm recognizing these words. This really excites my child to see the, to have this record here. So another reading test here. And she saw the first time she did it, a minute 21, the last time she was able to read all of these sentences in 41 seconds. This is showing progress. It's encouraging to my child anyway. We're not even to chart D yet because systematically we're not there. So I actually think this is very systematic approach. Okay, I already mentioned the biblical aspect. Masterbooks definitely has a strong biblical focus, as you can see with just the readers and what they emphasize. That Charlie book, The Grand Canyon Adventure, is all about creation and what the Grand Canyon can teach us about creation. So Masterbooks definitely has an evangelical viewpoint. I wouldn't say The Good and the Beautiful is super strong in that very high level. They acknowledge God, support creation. They're not going to get into much deeper than that. If you want to know a little bit more about what we do to study the Bible, then check out this video here because this curriculum, highly recommend it and it, you can totally use it as a family curriculum across all ages from the youngest to the oldest. To see my other comparison between Master Books and The Good and the Beautiful, check out this video here. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I will see you next time. Bye.